and I welcome you back to today's lesson. Today we're going to do equivalent fractions and adding fractions. We're going to kind of put the two lessons together. First, let's do a quick review. We have fractions. We have, this is one half. Total number of parts is two, and one part is being used is one half. The parts of the fraction, we have the numerator, the top number, and you have the denominator, the bottom number. Again, denominator starts with D. The word down starts with D. It's a good way to always remember that. Here, you have one third. You have three available pieces, and you have used one. Here, you have one fourth. Here, what do we have here? That's right, we have a mixed number. We have one whole and we have a half, and if we put it together, we have one half, and it's reminding us again that it's a mixed number. Now we talked about proper fractions and improper fractions. A proper fraction, the numerator is less than the denominator, so this is a proper fraction. Here we have a proper fraction fraction, numerator is less than the denominator, but what do we have here? We have an M proper, and this is our numerator, this is our denominator, and in an M proper, this fraction bar, remember, means division, but right now this is an improper fraction. This would be a proper fraction. This would be a improper fraction. This is a proper fraction, and this is improper. Very good. On that quick review, now up here, we are going to circle the proper, and we're going to put a box around the improper, so you tell me what I need to do with one half. Did I hear circle? Awesome. Yes, we're going to circle one half. What do we do with nine eighths? Now look closely. The numerator is larger than the denominator, so that's right. It's an improper fraction. How about seven six? You guys are getting good. That's right. Improper. Three fourths. Put a circle. It's proper. And how about nine tenths? Very good. It's proper. Now we left off with these problems on the board. This is a mixed number, and we wanted to take the mixed number and put it back to an improper fraction. We have a whole number times the denominator plus the numerator. So if over the lesson and you came up with 45 plus 4, if you came up with 49 fifths, you got 100% correct. Here we have 10 and 7 eighths. I gave you the hint that 8 was the denominator because 8 the denominator here. Now whole number times the denominator gives us 80 plus 7 gives us 87. Excellent job. Now we have 9 eighths. This is an improper fraction, and we need to put it into a whole number or a mixed number. Remember, anytime you have an improper fraction, you will either get a mixed number or a whole number. So 9 divided by 8 is 9 divided by 8. 8 can go into 9 one time. We multiply back. We get 8. Subtract 1 eighth. Sorry, 1 and 1 Eighth. Remember, our remainder becomes our numerator, our divisor becomes our denominator. Now, I said we're going to talk about some equivalent fractions today. If you can see over here, I have one-eighth plus one-eighth, because this kind of goes in with adding fractions. Anytime we have the same denominator, we'll get to that rule in a minute, but we have one and one. So this is going to be two-eighths. Now, remember when we did the factoring? and we found out things that go into the factory, well, 2 and 8 have a common factor, and that common factor is 2. So we can do what's called reducing this fraction by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Whatever you do to the numerator, you must do to the denominator. Whatever you do to the denominator, you must do to the numerator. So if we take 2 divided by 2, we get 1. If we take 8 divided by 2, we get Four. And as you can see, this 2 eighths is equal to 1 fourth. Here we have 8 on the bottom, and let's count how many eighths we have. We know 8 is going to be our denominator. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 eighths. 6 and 8 have a common factor. It is as well as 2, so let's divide by 2. Again, we're going to reduce these. If we do 6 divided by 2, you get 3. 
8 divided by 2, you get 4. So 6 eighths is equal to 3 fourths. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so the, fourth, the 4 is our denominator, and we have 3 of them. So you can see that these match. All right, they're equal. Here we use 10 as our denominator. Let's see how many we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 5 tenths. 5 and 10 have a common factor, and that common factor is 5. So let's reduce by 5. Reducing would be division. Dividing makes a number smaller. Multiplying will make a number bigger. It's always a key to remember that dividing means smaller, multiplying means bigger. So we're going to divide by 5. Again, whatever I do to my numerator, I have to do to the denominator and vice versa. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So 5 tenths is equal to 1 half. We're going to get into some practicing on that in just a minute and see if we can make some more equivalent fractions. Okay, so I have 2 sixths and I want to make an equivalent fraction that 12 is the new denominator. All right, well first I have to ask myself how many times does 6 go into 12? We're taking a number and making it larger, so we're going to multiply. So 6 times 2 is 12. Again, what I do to my denominator, I have to do to my numerator. So 2 times 2 then is 4. Very good. Now we have 5 sevenths. We want to make an equivalent fraction with 42 as the denominator. How many times does 7 go into 42? That's right. 7 times 6 equals 42. So I need to do 5 times 6. 5 times 6 is 30. So these are equal. These are equivalent fractions. All right, we have 4 fifths. We want to go have 60 now as our denominator. That's right. 5 times 12 equals 60. Do that to your numerator. Now you have 4 times 12. You have 48. Now we have 3 eighths, and we want to go to 32 as the denominator. 8 goes into 32 how many times? Four times, so eight times four. Now we have to do three times four, and three times four would be 12. Notice we made a larger denominator. That means we multiplied. Now we're going to take a number and try to reduce it. So here I have 10 twelfths. And I want to reduce this to the lowest terms. What factor is common with 10 and 12? Very good. 2. So I'm going to divide by 2. Divide by 2. Now I have 10 divided by 2 equals 5. 12 divided by 2 gives me 6. I have 5, 6. They are equivalent. If I took 5, 6 and wanted to put 12 as the denominator, I have to times by 2, and I would get... 10 12. So see, now we're taking the larger fraction and reducing it, dividing it, making it a smaller fraction, 5 6. All right, let's take, what if I wanted to take uh, 7 14 And I want to make equivalent fractions. I want to reduce this fraction. I have a common factor of 7, so I divide by 7. I divide by 7. What's 7 divided by 7? 1. 14 divided by 7 is 2. So 7 fourteenths is equal to 1 half. 1 half is equal to 7 fourteenths. What if I wanted to take 8 30 second, 8 32. So I want to divide 8 and 32. I need a common factor. Well, 2 is a common factor and 4 is a common factor. So let's you and 8 is a common factor. So if we, we want to always use the largest factor. So let's, but I want to show you. If we divided by 2, we would get 8 divided by 2 is 4. 32 divided by 2, 16. So now we have 4 sixteenths. Again, that's not in the lowest terms. We have now the common factors of 2 or 4. But again, if I was sticking with 2 because they're even numbers, I would get 2 eighths. Divide by 2 again, and I get 1 fourth. All of these are equal. 
All right, so if we took one fourth, if we took eight thirty twos, let's do that. And we started and we divided it by the greatest common factor of eight. Now you can see one fourth, one fourth. Now it is important to pay attention again to our denominators and, and our factors and stuff like that. We're going to get into, I'm going to show you some adding fractions. The key to adding fractions, they must have the same denominator. You cannot add fractions with different denominators. So let's see if we can add some fractions together. All right, we're going to start with 5 ninths plus 2 ninths. I have the same denominator, so I can add these fractions. Numerator, denominator, numerator, denominator. And both my denominator is 9. So I can add these. 9 will be my denominator. Now I simply add 5 plus 2. That's right. 7 ninths. Here I have 4 elevenths plus 3 elevenths plus 2 elevenths. I can add all the fractions together as long as they have the same denominator. And in this case, 11 is our denominator. Now I need to add my numerators. 4 plus 3 plus 2. Well, you have 4 plus 3 is 7 plus 2 is 9. Very good. Now, if you can see this problem, it's 73 and 2 sevenths plus 58 and 3 sevenths. Now, these are mixed numbers, but we can add mixed numbers because we have whole numbers plus a fraction. So let's start with the fraction. The fraction must have the same denominator. We have 2 sevenths and 3 sevenths. So do we have the same denominator? Yes. The denominator is 7, so we'll put 7. Now we're going to add 2 plus 3. It's 5. Very good. So our fraction part is 5 sevenths, but we can't forget to add the mixed number. Adding the mixed number is the add-in plus the add-in. Gives us the sum here. 3 plus 8 is, a, is 11. Put the 1, carry a 1. 1 plus 7 is 8 plus 5 gives you 13. So a mixed number plus a mixed number gives us a mixed number of 131 and 5 sevenths. Now, what if we try to add with different denominators. Well, that's why we talked about having equivalent fractions. All right, so let's get to that. Okay, let's start with problem number one, two-thirds plus one-sixth. I cannot add these the way they are. Do you remember why? That's right. They have to have common denominators. That means they have to be the same number on the denominator. All right, so we have three and six. What's a common not uh, multiple that these would have. What would be a common denominator? Common multiple? Well, we could do 18 because you can always do 3 times 6. But if we have a multiples of 3, we know it's 3, 6, 9. So here's our 3, 6, 9. Multiples of 6 are 6, 12. All right, so look here. We already have a common multiple. So let's go to 6. So that means 1 6th remains 1 6th. All right, but we need to take 2 thirds and 3 goes into 6 how many times? 2 times. Whatever you do to the denominator, do to the numerator. So now you have 2 times 2. That's right, 4. Now you have 4 6 plus 1 6. My denominator is 6. I add 4 plus 1. That's right, you get here I have one half plus three tenths. Do you know a common multiple that we want to use? You could do two, four, six, eight, ten, multiples of two, multiples of ten, ten, twenty. Well, looky here, ten is our least common multiple, so let's go with ten. So three tenths remains three tenths because I didn't do anything. That's times one, that's times one. Here, I'm changing to 10. How many times does 2 go into 10? 5 times. So multiply by 5. 1 times 5 is 5. Now we have 5 plus 3 is 8 tenths would be my answer. Now if I wanted to put it in lowest terms, I would need to reduce this with the common factor of 2 because 2 goes into both 8. So now I could divide by 2 and I would get 4 fifths. It's always good to put your answer in lowest terms. All right, so just throwing that out there and just keep it, keeping a rem reminding about that. Just it's good to have lowest terms and we'll get to that more later. 
All right. Here I have a mixed number, 8 and 3 eighths, plus 4 and 1 fourth. But my fraction doesn't have the same denominator, and I have to start with the fraction part. So I have 8 and 4. What should we use as our common multiple, or as our common denominator? Let's go with 8. So let's leave this as 3 eighths. Let's take the 4 over to 8, and to do that, I multiply by 2. So I need to do my numerator 1 times 2 is 2. 3 eighths plus 2 eighths is 5 eighths. Don't forget the whole number. 8 plus 4 is 12 and 5 eighths. Now, if you can see this problem, I have 5 and 3 eighths plus 4 and 3 eighths plus 2 and 3 eighths. Now, can I add these fractions the way they are? You bet I can because they all have a common denominator of 8. All right, so let's go. 8 is a denominator. What's our numerator? 3 plus 3 plus 3. Well, 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9. All right now I have 9 over 8. Do you remember what kind of fraction that is? It is an improper fraction. All right, but let's go here. Let's do our whole number. 4 plus 5 plus 4 is 9 plus 2 is 11. Now, I have 11 and 9 eighths. Can I leave my answer as such? No, because I have this improper fraction. But we know how to change improper fractions to whole numbers or mixed numbers. So 9 divided by 8. 8 goes into 9 one time. Now, that 9 eighths is equal to 1 and 1 eighth. So let's add this to this. So I have 1 eighth, and what's 11 plus 1? It will be 12 and 1 eighths. Now this video was a little bit longer than normal, but I hope it didn't bore you too much. Fractions, equivalent fractions, adding fractions, common denominators, all those good stuff. But I will see you again, and next time we'll talk about subtracting fractions. Have a great day.